Hi guys, I'm Chambo and today we're going to be talking about the three things that you should be focusing on in order of priority when you're learning a language. I used these three tips when I was learning Korean and Mandarin Chinese and I know they're going to be helpful for you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and tell me what else you want to learn in the future. Let's begin. Number one is to rote learn. Your number one priority when you're a beginner or intermediate level learner should be to rote learn and build up as much latent knowledge as possible. When you don't have enough latent knowledge to activate, if you go out into a real world setting, you're more likely to be flustered and frustrated about the fact that you can't communicate to the level that you'd like to. According to contemporary readings in curriculum, language learners have a 30% retention rate of any words that they learn today, two weeks later. What that means is that if you study 10 new words today, you should be able to retain three out of 10 of those in two weeks time. That's why when you're a beginner or even at the intermediate level, you should be focused on stacking up that knowledge and just building that volume. The more vocabulary and grammar concepts that you learn today, the earlier you're going to be able to activate them in the future. For beginners, get a quality textbook, bust it out, learn it, revise it and memorize as much of that content as possible. If you're an intermediate level learner, you can equally look at textbooks, but start incorporating other types of media. In my case, I wouldn't be looking at newspapers and magazines in English, so I wouldn't do it in another language. Instead, I'd be looking at things like music, movies and comics, because that's what originally interests me. Stick to what you like. Within that category of road learning, there's a lot of techniques you can use like word association, thematic learning, and one of my favorites, using ridiculous phrases that you can't not remember. But we can get into those in another video. Step number two, activate. In step two, we're gonna be taking all of that knowledge that we amassed in step one through road learning and start activating it, converting it into permanent memory. Language activation comes through repeated exposure and use of the language. So in order to activate your language, you need to go out into the real world and start using it. So go out and talk to people. Start throwing out words that you've learned recently. Steer the conversation towards a topic that you've been looking into. You start randomly using grammar structures, even if you think you're going to be incorrect. And don't be afraid to ask. People feel flattered when you ask them for advice. You cannot be good at the language unless you go through the trial and error approach and test everything that you've learned. And if you're still too afraid or embarrassed to start using the language, resort to the tried and tested method of drinking alcohol. I am by no means promoting alcoholism, but the benefit of alcohol for language learners is that it gets rid of that mental barrier, that insecurity that you might be saying something wrong, and it puts you back into baby mode. How do babies learn languages? They mumble until they get sounds right, they get grammar structures right, they get words right. That's the same thing that you need to do, and that's why alcohol is so effective for so many people, especially in the beginning and intermediate phases. Now we are at the third and final step, which is probably the most useless as well, which is adjustment. And what I mean by adjustment is things like changing your accent, your intonation, your enunciation. These things, they don't really add value in terms of the message you're delivering, but if the presentation of your message is somehow important, which in 99% of cases it isn't, it can be helpful for a very long time. And to this day, when I don't feel like my vocabulary and grammar ability is sufficient, I do rely on some of these tricks that make people feel like I have studied Korean or Mandarin for a lot longer than I have. So if you put a tiny bit of effort into mastering your accent and your enunciation, it makes people go, wow, even though you don't have that much to say. One thing to keep in mind is that just because you become good at a language, it doesn't mean that the quality of the content that you're delivering through that language is gonna be any better. So it becomes a bit of an opportunity cost situation, especially for adults thinking, do I become better at presenting what I am presenting or do I focus on improving the quality of stuff that I'm presenting, whether that be humor, business knowledge, or whatever it is that you have to offer. There we go. That's the three things in order of importance that you should be focusing on when you're learning a language. Number one is rote learning, number two is activation of that knowledge, and number three is making the small adjustments. We didn't get too specific in this video, but if it was useful to you, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. That really drives my content strategy. If this video gets enough traction, we can go into topics like learning tricks, enunciation, and how to be a charming person in other languages. Thanks for watching.